This lesson is a continuation of Taylor and Maclaurin's series, and we will concentrate on the geometric and binomial series, which you had in your lesson. I will be doing a couple more examples for you on your geometric series and your binomial series to help you review this particular lesson. What is a infinite geometric series? Well, we already know that an infinite geometric series starts out with a, and then we add a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed plus, and then we add more to it, plus an a r to the n, and that's equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a r to the nth power. You learned this in your algebra classes as well as in our review of geometric series. What if we want to find the sum of an infinite geometric series? Again, we have a formula for that. So the sum of a geometric series is given as a over one minus r. Using Taylor polynomials, how do we get this? How do we go from that summation formula to the series itself? Because when we're thinking of Taylor or Maclaurin polynomials or series, we think of a function going to a series. So this time, let's make f of x equal to a over 1 minus x and use our development of a Taylor polynomial to figure all of this out. So if f of x is equal to a over 1 minus x, then f prime of x is equal to a over 1 minus x quantity squared. f double prime of x is equal to 2a over 1 minus x quantity cubed. f triple prime of x is equal to 6a over 1 minus x to the fourth power. And if we continue this on down, we got f to the nth prime of x is equal to n factorial a over 1 minus x to the nth plus 1. Well, how does this convert into our Taylor polynomial? Well, we've centered it around zero, so next thing we need to do is to substitute the zeros in. So f of zero is equal to a, f prime of zero is equal to a again, f double prime of zero is equal to 2a, f triple prime of zero is equal to 6a, and then down to f n prime of zero, and that equals n factorial times a. If we want to put this into our Taylor series, we'll have f of x is equal to a plus a x plus 2a x squared over 2 factorial plus 6ax cubed over 3 factorial plus dot, 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 plus n factorial ax to the n over n factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Remember, this is infinite, therefore we continue on. So simplifying, we get a plus ax plus ax squared plus ax cubed plus dot, 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 plus ax to the nth power. And in symbols with our sigma, we get that equals sigma from n equals zero to infinity ax to the nth power. And that is your geometric series, once again shown through the development of a Taylor polynomial. To go on, this time we are given f of x is equal to a over 1 plus x. Well, the only difference between this one and the last one is that the negative between the 1 and the x has been changed to a positive. And how does this affect our Taylor series centered about 0? So let's go through again and create this one. So we'll have f of x is equal to a over 1 plus x, f prime of x is equal to negative a 
over 1 plus x quantity squared. F double prime of x is equal to 2a over 1 plus x quantity cubed. F triple prime of x is equal to negative 6a over 1 plus x to the fourth power. And then if we continue on, we get f to the nth power of x is equal to, and how do we take care of the negatives and positive? We will say negative 1 to the nth power. Of course, if n is even, it will be a positive number. If n is odd, it will be a negative number. And then we'll have n factorial a over 1 plus x to the nth plus 1. Let's go on and create it around 0, centered at 0. So f of 0 is equal to a, f prime of 0 is equal to negative a, f double prime at 0 is equal to 2a, f triple prime of 0 is equal to negative 6a, and then down to f to the nth prime of 0 is equal to negative 1 to some nth power times n factorial a. And if we put this into our Taylor series, again, we will get f of x is equal to a minus ax plus ax squared minus ax cubed plus dot, 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 plus a negative 1, we have to include the toggling from positive to negative to the nth power, ax to the nth power. And in sigma notation, that's equal to sigma from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power, ax to the nth power. Now let's check to see if indeed this is what we've created. If I put in an n is equal to 0 into my formula, I'll have negative 1 to the 0 power, which is 1, a x to the 0 power, which is a. So I get the proper sign in front of my a. If I put in a 1 for n, then I'll have negative 1 to the first power, which will give a negative 1, and then it will be a x. So my signs are appropriate, so this is the formula that we will use. Again, it's just a recreation of your geometric series, this time with the plus. So this one actually has the signs changing back and forth, whereas the first one with the 1 minus x is just a plus ax, etc. So let's go on. What happens with our binomial series? So if we start off with f of x is equal to 1 plus x cubed, we can say our function is equal to 1 plus x quantity cubed. The prime of x is equal to 3 times 1 plus x squared. Double prime of x is equal to 6 times 1 plus x to the first power. f triple prime of x is equal to 6. And f to the fourth prime of x is equal to 0. Centered around 0, we'll have f of 0 equals 1, f prime of 0 equals 3, f double prime of 0 equals 6, f triple prime of 0 equals 6, and f to the fourth prime of 0, of course, is 0. Putting this into our Taylor polynomial, we will get the expansion f of x is equal to 1 plus 3x over 1 factorial, remember that, plus 6x squared over 2 factorial, plus 6x cubed over 3 factorial, plus, of course, a 0. Computing this, we get 1 plus 3 x plus 3x squared plus x cubed, which is certainly an expansion for 1 plus x quantity cubed if we use the binomial theorem. Let's go on and do one more of these. What is the Taylor series for f of x equals 
1 plus x to the 1 half power. Again, we can expand it through Taylor series or we can use our formula. So if we look at this one, we'll have f of x is equal to 1 plus x to the 1 half power. f prime of x is equal to 1 half times 1 plus x to the negative 1 half power f double prime of x is equal to negative one-fourth, one plus x to the negative three-halves power. f triple prime of x is equal to three-eighths times one plus x to the negative five-halves power. If we center this around zero, we will get f of zero is equal to one. F prime of zero is equal to one half. F double prime of zero is equal to negative one fourth. F triple prime of zero is equal to three eighths. Expanding this out into our Taylor polynomial form, we get f of x is equal to one plus one half x minus one fourth x squared over two factorial plus three eighths x cubed over three factorial. And that equals one plus one half x minus one eighth x squared plus one over sixteen x cubed. And if we put it into our binomial formula that we got by working through the general form, which is one plus x to the k power equals one plus kx plus k times k minus one x squared over two factorial plus k times k minus one times k minus two x cubed over three factorial. Since our function is one plus x to the one half power, we will indeed get one plus one half x plus k is one half, so we have one half times negative one half x squared over two factorial plus one half times negative one half times negative three halves x cubed over three factorial, and that will give us one plus one half x minus one eighth x squared plus, if we multiply everything out, the threes go out here. We have two times two is four times two is eight, and then another two down here. So we get one over sixteen x cubed. So this creates that binomial theorem expansion that may look very, very difficult when you are working with it in your book, but is very simple to do if you just keep in mind it is a Taylor series or Taylor polynomial depending how far you go out. Remember, if it, if it goes towards infinity, it's a series. If it just ends at one point, it is a Taylor polynomial. This concludes the lesson on geometric series and binomial series.